45% of eligible North Carolina voters took to the polls during early voting. Another 3 million eligible voters Another 3 million eligible voters could be coming up in this election. Just a couple of reminders, polls open at 6.30 in the morning, close at 7.30 in the evening. Your vote will count as long as you're in line by 7.30. While most of the country has their eyes on our future president, some residents here in the east are still working to rebuild their homes after Hurricane Matthew. WNCT Zora Stevenson has more on how the flood has presented challenges to this year's turnout. Road in Greenville a couple weeks ago, this entire area was underwater. And tomorrow, thousands of people were supposed to make their way here to the Veterans of Foreign Wars building to cast their ballot. But thanks to Hurricane Matthew, that won't happen. Despite the challenges, officials say the election should go on without a hitch. First time in my life. At 62 years old. Nervous? No, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Dixon is taking a trip to the polls for the very first time. I never thought of it. No time off and no way to get there. The transmission, uh, third gear doesn't work. People like Dixon, who live in poverty, are statistically less likely to vote. They don't have a lot of time. Their jobs don't allow them to take off work. They, they, don't, they might be working two or three jobs. Marcus Thompson works with Democracy NC. He says the same people who have little time to vote got hit by Matthew the hardest. The people who this flood affected were African Americans and under advantaged people, people who we have the hardest time getting out to vote already because of their conditions and so it was kind of a double whammy. They wanted everybody abandoned their house and I had no place to go, I didn't know where to go. When you're worried about your house. I was nervous, <laughs> scared. Your safety. The hurricane kind of just lifted up my shingles and took some off. When you're under a mandatory evacuation, voting gets put on the back burner. It wasn't even in my mind. Getting to the polls is just half the battle. In some places, floodwaters left precincts in pieces, and when voters came to cast their ballots, they were greeted with signs like this. They're remodeling this whole place. It got flooded. Okay, well, wherever they voted. In Lenore County, two precincts were damaged after waist-deep water flooded the area. Our voting site is right here in this big room. Leaving Board of Elections Director Dana King to pick up the pieces. Matthew kind of presented a lot of problems for us and challenges that we began to face. Both precincts were replaced by local churches, and now King just has to get the word out. We have six sites. Jackson Heights Free Will Baptist Church is the one that's taken the place for this place. With everything Eastern North Carolina has endured, Lenore County's early voting was a success. A thousand more people compared to 2012. It's all thanks to officials who are making sure you have a place to vote and groups who want to get you there. Our mission is to negate the effects of Matthew, to make sure that all those people that want to vote will be able to vote despite what has happened. That mission is exactly why Gary Dixon can check voting off the bucket list. It wasn't even in my mind. I never thought of it until somebody came to my house and asked me if I voted. And for the first time ever, at 62 years old, he participated in an election. You're officially a voter, huh? Yeah. First time in my life. While Matthew affected thousands, just like Dixon, it didn't affect turnout. Counties like Pitt, Beaufort, Craven, and Lenore all reporting a spike in early voters. Live in Greenville, Zora Stevenson, not in your side.